and welcome to the Bureau Podcast with Matt, Mike and Mel. In this episode, we dive into sustainability issues related to food, hospitality and travel globally and at home here in Vietnam. Hey guys, are you ready? Ready. Yeah! All right, let's get into it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Matt Cowan, the Bureau Chief and host of the Bureau Podcast. This is our first podcast for 2020, believe it or not. We've been busy traveling, eating and living and dodging coronavirus. I uh, had to slip that one in, guys. In this episode, we introduce some <laughs> Bureau Bites. We get on the Bureau Hotline to talk sustainability in food, hospitality and travel. And finally, we get excited about what's been happening in f and in Saigon lately, which brings me to my co-host to the left. If she had a virus named after her, it would be called the Tita Mel virus. <laughs> and if you came down with it, you would have an unrelenting predilection for royal watching. Hashtag royal watching. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to stop yourself commenting negatively on Prince Harry and Meghan and you'd go gaga whenever W and K came on screen. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about Melanie Castle. How are you, Mel? Hello. How are you? Long Good. time no see. Yeah, yeah. Since lunch. <laughs> uh, and sitting to my right is a fella who, if he had a virus named after him, it would be called the Palumbo virus. Ooh. Oh, not and, the Shutterbug? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. good one. Oh, yeah. I didn't think of that. And if you came down with it, you wouldn't be able to stop helping yourself to everybody's drinks and food, even though you insist you're not hungry. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about Mike Palumbo. How are you, Mike? Good. All right. you? Was that correct? Yeah. Are you not yeah. happy with your virus name? No. Okay. Righto, then put your creative geniuses uh. together and come up with a virus name for me. Oh, wow. I'm not sure I should let you do this. The Mad Cowan disease? Yes. Oh, nice. Oh, that's okay. great. Not bad. Yeah. Oh, wait. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that. Yeah. 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 Thanks for that. Yeah. Making fun of my name. Ooh, I have one. <laughs> But it's too personal. Okay. All right, let's move on. (laughs) Now, we've had quite a break from the Bureau podcast. What have you been up to, Mike? Um, Anything much? Anything? No, same old shit, different day. Snapping away, snap, snap, snapping away. uh, You went on a bit of a trip, though. Oh, don't set me up again. Uh, no, 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 uh, no. Yeah, I went on to Taiwan. Wow. For, for Taiwan. How, many, how many trips have you uh, done it to Taiwan? Um, this will, that, was, that was my third time there. Wow. Is, like it, it. is it such a big place that you like see new things or? No, I, I mean, uh, the first two times I went, they, they were two totally different trips. But then this, this third time, uh, it was... Um, uh, more of a, it was like the best of tour. Wow. I guess is the best okay. way to put it. But um, it's just super easy to get around. The infrastructure is great. I mean, you can take a high speed rail from the northern city of Taipei to the southern city of Kaohsiung in like like 90 minutes or 70 minutes or something like that. So it's, uh, you get, you can just get it around easily. So you've covered the whole island by oh, now, yeah, yeah. like three trips. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. And definitely. what about you, Matt? Manila, oh, the Philippines. the Philippines. Yeah, of course, I went with you to the Philippines. <laughs> it's turned into a uh, annual trip, really, hasn't yeah. it? We get to Manila every around every Christmas. Tep. How many times have you visited? Oh, probably six or seven. Yeah, been there a few times now. But this time, of course, we... We bypassed Manila, really, the, yep. f- the first when we flew in and we flew off to Cebu City. Um, yeah, Cebu City. Yeah. Uh, so we yeah. went to the Visayas region. Yeah. Because Manila would be in Luzon. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, Cebu City, uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a place you'd probably fly into and then mm-hmm. drive out of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, although but, but my family yeah. is from Cebu, uh, so <laughs> yeah. we, we had to drop in. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Um, but uh, good to go all the same. And then uh, we spent three nights there and then caught a ferry to Bohol, Bohol which Pang is Lao. fantastic. A two our ferry ride to mm. Bohol and Panglao Island in Bohol. Yeah, and Bohol is famous, of course, for the uh, chocolate hills. But we didn't go there. <laughs> and the tarsiers, the little uh, are they monkeys? Yeah, they're smallest yeah, monkeys they, in they the world. In, they fit in the palm of your hand. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but they were at the other end of the island. We we went north, I think, and they're south yeah. or something like that. And so then we went to Dumaguete. Yeah, which is on the island of Negros. Dumag. And that's a bit, yeah, Duma, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and that's about a 90-minute ferry ride mm-hmm. as well. And then when you're on the ferry, you can – you actually track alongside on the – Starboard side, I think, Mel. Yep. 
uh, you can see uh, Cebu Island. And then on the port side is, uh, for the first part, Bohol. Yep. And then eventually you get to Negros mm-hmm. and then dock at Dumaguete City, which is the capital oh. of uh, Negros <laughs> Oriental. Uh, <laughs> Occident, Oriental, yes. <laughs> on the east side, yeah. So very All beautiful right. city. Well, if you'd like to learn more about the Philippines, go to our website at thebureauasia.com. Well, let's kick off with Bureau Bites, shall we? It's a segment where we tell each other what we got up to related to F&B since our last episode, which was uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, it might be a dinner, event, festival, bar, whatever. Who's going first? Um, well, I guess I'm on okay, first on the list. Well, since we went away on holidays for Christmas, we thought we'd stay in town for Tet. And so we just, you know, revisited old favorite hangouts over Tet. Some have actually stayed constant, like uh, this favorite restaurant of ours. It's called Mi Tuk Tien Fat Lak. Mi Tuk Tien Fat Lak. It's a dim sum place over in Cholon. So... It's amazing. It's family owned. They open from 6 a.m. until lunchtime and then it's closed. So, you know, if you want yep. your dim sum, that's like yeah, it's a cracker. an Love amazing place. place. Yep. And it hasn't changed. In the last 10 years that I've been living here, it's constant. Yep. So while others that I, you know, revisited, you know, Tet is always a time where you're like, oh, let's look ahead. But then also, you know, let's look back and enjoy the memories. Unfortunately, in this particular restaurant that I went to, it's called Lak Thai. It's okay. on Makti Boy Street yeah. in yeah, District that's an oldie. 1. That's been there for 15 years. Right, okay. Yep. So, you know, they changed the menu a little bit, you know, and the big the, the big portions that I used to love is, you know, like moderate portions. Mm. Well, I guess yep. some businesses need to adjust with the times, but yeah, it was a good, you know, like yep. walk through your favorite uh, food memory yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's down thing. that little hem yeah. as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, that- Warda. Um, uh, they used to, Warda, yeah, is that yeah. still there? Yeah, Warda's wow. still there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well. Yep. Okay, cool. What about you, Mike? Dr. Burger. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, sorry, I kind of got. I think I got. Been, I got lost in Mel's. They've actually got story. a venue now. Oh, so they've my actually, story was actually really like what uh, visualized. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was picturing myself walking through the hems of. That's one of the alleys you haven't been down, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, wait. What about hey. Dr. Burger, Mike? So um, I've noticed on Instagram that they have opened up their own storefront now, like a, like a proper. Yeah. Storefront. Have you actually so, seen it? Have you been there yet? No, I haven't oh, been there yet. I've seen it online. But, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yes. But I mean, yeah. I've uh, I've almost made the the almost made the uh, the the trip out there just to go check it out. Looks Where like is it? District five or oh right, okay, I interesting think. spot to have or ten uh, maybe Burger. district ten. Okay, district right. ten seems more logical. I think close to three. Yeah, district three might yeah. be just on the border there. Right. Yeah. Like you know where the big roundabout is on CMT8? Yeah. Yeah, near think, the prison. I, yeah, I think it's around that area. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Have a burger, go to the cell. Yeah. And uh, what a life. <laughs> last meal? <laughs> yeah, last meal <laughs> delivered. De- actually delivered hot. Oh. Imagine that. Uh, like and some then, fries and then, with and that. On, on t- you wouldn't want it to be delivered late, though, yeah. would you? <laughs> and, then, and, then you would, uh, and then you can catch a train out of town. Oh, how would you like that? Ooh, well done. Yeah, yeah. Cooked. Electrified. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> well, uh, if you've been... Oh, that's too cringe-worthy. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Put it this way, it wouldn't be the first uh, buns that you'd had in a prison cell anyway, Ooh. would it? <laughs> um, what I-, I don't know, I haven't been to prison, that's just what Mike told me. Well, um, if you've been following me on social media... I've hey, there's been- a difference between jail and prison, okay? <laughs> Uh, I've been riding around town in search of some great local eats. I've been trying to reconnect as well with the city. Um, and I've called my little segment on Instagram, hashtag meals on wheels. Hashtag meals on wheels. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, this week, this month, sorry, the month of February, I've gone on a bit, of, I've got a bit of a theme happening and I've called it the chicken run. <laughs> so I'm going around, I'm going to try and visit as many uh, chicken places as I possibly can in the next, well, we've only got two more weeks left, but I've, uh, I've knocked off three so far and they're three uh, pretty different ones. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not just going totally fried chicken all the time as much as <laughs> I'd like to. Um, so check that out. That's on my – actually, that's on my personal Instagram. It's on um, at Matt Cowan Saigon. Um, I also want to give a shout-out to the guys at Gui or is it We? I think it's We Cuisine Tomato and Mixology tomato. on uh, Le Tanton Street there in District 1. Uh, they invited me and you, Mike, to try mm. out their new menu the other night. Yeah. Uh, you've got some pretty good things to say about it. Yeah, I thought it was uh, very good, um, creative, but not too over the top. Yep. And um, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you and I have were on the same page that yep. we were uh, we were impressed by everything. It was really good. Yeah, looked good down the lens too. Yeah. You've taken yeah. some nice shots, so uh, everybody look out for that feature coming up. The, what was it? The <laughs> the cigar tartar. Yeah, they do a uh, a really cool tartar. They make it. It was good, it was good look too. Excellent, don't yeah. they? And it's like a little jaya. Sort of, it's inspired by that deep fried spring roll with a thin, it's like a little, little crispy wrapper, crispy, it was yeah. super thin, yeah. Yeah. beautiful with a little, you know, sort of Chinese spices, oh, it's got pepper going mm. on there as well. Uh, but yeah, as usual, I thought it was excellent. So get in there and give it a go. It's not just about cocktails and beautiful people. Although that's oh, there are a nice. lot of beautiful people at there Gui. Are. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, uh, but Mark Molnar and his team in the kitchen, they, they're they always coming up with really creative stuff and, yeah. it, and it's good. So that's good. get along there when you're thinking about having to, having something to eat one night. Have a fancy dinner. Hmm. And lunch. And lunch. And lunch. They do a fantastic lunch. Well, any discussion these days about food or hospitality or travel will inevitably turn to sustainability. While coronavirus is all the talk at the moment and with the announcement just yesterday that Vietnam will be keeping schools closed until the end of February, we can't deny its significance. So we can't ignore the impact it's having on just about everything in Vietnam. But while the coronavirus has stolen the headlines globally, it hasn't meant that the need to be sustainable in everything we do has gone away or is it less important? In fact, Joaquin Phoenix's acceptance speech at the Oscars last week, Mel, yeah. reinforced his stance on food production and eating habits. I know you're a huge movie buff yes, and I am. follow the act follow what the actors say pretty mm-hmm. closely. So mm-hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that, Mel? Well, you know, I've been thinking about it for a while and as somebody who's been a fan of pork meat basically my entire life, you know, being <laughs> Filipino and yep. Yep. having grown up with pork sinigang and lechon, you know, and all of these things. We're coming up with a pop here. Go ahead, Mike, do it. Oh, oh yeah. The Bureau okay. Hotline. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, back to seriousness here. Um, obviously, I'm not living under a rock, but it really has got me thinking with everything going on, Australian bushfires, um, the whole climate change, Mm, um, the Paris Agreement. I get the feeling we're going to have a big (laughs) announcement here. Yes, it's early steps. I'm not going cold turkey, but I am moving towards a more plant-based diet. Wow. (laughs) Uh, okay. Yeah. Pick, pick my jaw up off the floor. Uh, well, it will impact you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, will it? Will it? <laughs> Unless you well, cook actually, for yourself. I was just about to say. I don't think we um, eat a hell of a lot of meat, really. Um. I mean, well, obviously, well, compared about, to a what vegetarian. About, what about fishing? Like, are you like pescatarianism is another one. Well, yeah. Like, like I said, I'm not gonna be, you know, in front of the this microphone pontificating on, you know, going cold turkey right. and, mm. you know, the dairy. And the eggs are still there, and really, so you know, you'd be ovo lacto vegetarian. Yeah, look, I'm not one for terminology, but what I can say is that I am conscious about it. I am going to lead a more responsible lifestyle. Okay. Well, Mike, on the contrary, yeah. until recently, you were a vegetarian, right? And you told me the other night at Qui. When you, were, yeah. when you were stuffing yourself with a Mexican, uh, <laughs> what was it? Taco uh, or something. Plank steak. Yeah. Mexican yeah. style steak. beef. Yeah. Uh, that you were no longer vego. Yeah. What's uh, with well, that? I mean, but I, I, I guess I can't really say that I've been n- non-vegetarian or I'm sorry, vegetarian until recently. Cause I mean, it's, it's been maybe about 
a month or two since I've just said to myself, um, maybe I will have like a dish here and there that will okay. eat meat. But 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 uh, the the proper vegetarians and vegans or whatever you whatever that mm-hmm. that whole mm. um, community. I mean, look, you you can't you can't really just say like, oh, I'll have one dish yeah. and, and still be considered vegetarian. But wait a it's minute. Very, let's, let's put some context. How, when did you start become a vegetarian? Uh, so, um, in my early twenties, I oh, mean, maybe when I was, wow. no, 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 I'm, I'm kind of setting up a story, but, okay. um, when I, when I moved to, uh, Los Angeles, when I was, uh, when I was maybe in 20 or 21 years old, uh, I've noticed that, um, the accessibility uh, for uh, vegetarian and vegan foods uh, is readily available. It's yeah. it's everywhere. I mean, I even joke about like I'll challenge certain restaurants to see like oh this place like they don't have it. But then you go hey do you have this? oh yeah we have soy rizzo we have this blah 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 mm. and it, it it so they just look at it as like look we know that there's going to be vegans and vegetarians. It's or the whatever. Hollywood effect. And 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 we know they're going to come in here so we'd much rather cater to everybody than just Oh, just say, oh, well, fuck you. And we only serve steak here. You, yeah. you goddamn vegan, you know, like, like, <laughs> like we, like they, so they try to accommodate for everybody. And, um, anyway, so that's where it kind of started when I used to do maybe like six months on six months off, uh, eating meat, uh, being, uh, quote unquote, ovo lacto vegetarian, which means that I would eat eggs and mm-hmm. cheese, but no meat, no fish. But why did you do it? Is it because of uh, the same reasons so I'm doing it? I started it, it as a like health... Like in Phoenix? No. <laughs> I, start, I mean, I, you know, I started it climate as a, change. I started it as a health benefit. Okay. And then uh, the longer I would do the on and off, on and off thing, but um, I started kind of realizing that, um, oh, like, uh, you know, like cattle farming is... Mm. is very detrimental to the ah, environment. Right, right. Well, and Matt, you grew up in a dairy farm. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And how does that, you know, do you have like any strong feelings or? Yeah, look, there were certain things that, um, certain practices when I look back now that um, my father did to a certain extent. I mean, I used to, uh, you know, we, we had like 180 cows that we milked twice a day, mm. you know, and so um, you, you hear a lot about, uh, farmers, uh, you know, taking the baby, the, the, the calf off the, off the cow, you know, uh, that's not long the, after it's born. That's and, the Joaquin Phoenix like speech. Yeah, yeah. That was it. That's where yeah. I heard it. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, back when I was growing up, if I'd heard that, I, I would have laughed that off, but that, mm-hmm. I think it's a, I think it's a valid point. Um, still, um, you know, I mean, humans have been farming and domesticating animals for, you know, centuries or more, you know, eons really. And so I'm not, I'm not saying that that necessarily means it's good Mm -hmm. and that it's right. Um, but I think, I think like in most things there should be a balance. So, um, you know, I'm, my, my outlook on farming is probably very different from, from my dad's outlook. Mm -hmm. I think he'd have a very different opinion, but I do see, see the, the point. I understand the point that people make Mm -hmm. uh, when they talk about cruelty to animals and farming animals like that. But But um, then the three of us, well, we're all coming from a a Western perspective. Well, I would probably put myself in that Western mode, um, even if I'm not you know, Caucasian like you guys. But what I'd like to know is, you know, we live in Vietnam. We are here. Mm. I wonder if there's another Asian perspective to this, you know, to this uh, conversation yeah, that we're well, having. Um, Could we call somebody on yeah. the Bureau hotline? Well, it is the Bureau hotline. Yeah. And um, we've got someone who's gone down the opposite path as you, Mike. Uh, his name is Hien Chan. Um, Hien was born and raised in Vinh Lom a small town located in the Mekong Delta, just south of Saigon. Mm-hmm. Um, Hien's decided to go veg- uh, vegan, um, and he's also set up his own uh, website called Green Shug. Wow. I hope I'm pr- uh, pronouncing that 
that correctly. Uh, some, it's something he calls a digital garden for those who care about their planet or our planet. Um, he has a passion for food, cooking and writing, and he's an advocate for sustainability. And as I, as I mentioned, uh, he's now vegan. So uh, we're going to give him a call and just ask him about his lifestyle. Uh, let's give him a go, hey? Hello. Hello, Hen. This is Matt from the Bureau. Hey, Matt. Hey, how, how are, are you? Good, good. Hi, Hen. It's Melanie. I'm also on the line. Oh, hi, Melanie. Hi. And we want to introduce you to our friend, Mike. Hey, Hen. Hi, this is Mike. Hello, Mike. Hi, nice to meet you. So uh, thanks for joining us on Hi. the Bureau podcast, Hen. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, for sure. Now uh, we follow each other on social media and I follow obviously follow your posts very closely because we tend to have uh, sort of somewhat opposing views on uh, food production and sustainability sometimes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think right. that's a healthy, a healthy a conversation healthy, yes. is going uh, healthy on. Healthy respect. Yes. Healthy respect. <laughs> um, now your website is called Green Shug. Is that right? Yeah, Green Shug. Yeah, so can you it's, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about it and how it came about? Um, sure. So I one day I just uh, decided that when I decided that I became vegan, um, I wanted to have a, a platform to share um, what um, I cook and what I eat. Um, so that is the what where the idea came about it, it's just a basic idea it's, it's a blog basically um to share my my recipe and um the, the lifestyle that I'm, I'm i'm following okay yeah. and and what brought about this change in your belief in in terms of food production and the way you live your life so before i i, I go into that i just want to say that um i'm, I'm not um, born vegan. I don't mm. think a lot of us born vegan. Yep. Um, I eat meat for almost 30 years of my life. Um, um, so I still remember one day when I uh, went out with a friend, she a uh, vegetarian, and mm. um, she asked me to order some vegetarian food, and I didn't know how to. I mean, um, <laughs> okay. I wasn't familiar with, with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, uh, but the reason I decided to become vegan, it's quite straightforward. I went home after work one day and, um, I watched a documentary called, um, food choices. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah. And that just um, changed my life. My, uh, way that I decide to become vegan and um, not contribute to animal suffering. Okay. Yep. And so on. Yeah. Um, he and I'm just looking at your, um, your website, the green shug. Um, and in, yep. in your essay page, I actually see a photo of the Buddha. Um, is going vegan also a, a decision based on a, um, you know, a, a meditative uh part of your life as well. Can you tell us something more uh, about okay. that? Yep. Um, actually, um, my decision to go vegan, not related to religion. Mm. So I'm not a Buddhist, mm -hmm. but um, my family, my, my dad and my mom, they, um, they practice Buddhism at home. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm familiar with that. But when I go vegan, I just only First, I became vegan because I want to take care of my health mm -hmm. for healthy health reasons. Mm -hmm. And later on the journey, I found that um, uh, it's a lot about the animals and how we treat the animals yep. and also the environment issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think in, in Vietnam, um, if someone is vegetarian or we, we say and die here, mm -hmm. they normally practice Buddhism. Yes. But because um, when I watch documentary, it's more of a um, Western philosophy. 
So it's not religious, um, religion related. Mm. So um, I can also see on your website that you have a part where you have kitchen experiments. So uh, maybe for our listeners yes. who are not as good in the kitchen like you, um, do you have some tips for us on some of the restaurants that you would like to recommend if people want to eat um, vegan food or vegetarian food? So in, in Vietnam, I think if you live in Ho Chi Minh, um, Ho Chi Minh City is one of the, I think, one of the 20 friendliest cities in the world for oh, vegan. Okay. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of vegan places. And um, my favorite one is, is called uh, Bong Shung Restaurant in oh, Wing Yu Street. Yeah. And it's a Vietnamese, Vietnamese dishes. Um, I love the environment there. It, it's beautiful in decorations and it's a very good food. Mm. Uh, I think a dish there mm-hmm. about sixty, seventy thousand. Oh wow! Okay. Um, for a dish, but but there they they serve really big portion. So normally when I go there with friends, we we share. Mm. So one dish we can share between two persons. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Hien, uh, you're also a mentor for yep. something called Challenge Twenty Two. Yeah, right. Yeah. What's, what's that all about? Um, actually, I'm very new with that, and I recently became uh, a mentor in that um, movement uh, recently. Um, so it's a website, and um, it encourages everyone to sign up and uh, try the vegan lifestyle mm. for uh, 22 days. Okay, oh, that's wow. the tw- that's the relevance yeah. of the 22. Okay, yep. Yeah, genlen22.com. And why is why twenty two? Why not twenty or ten <laughs> or fifteen or? <laughs> um, I think psychological, a lot of psychology research. I mean, say that it takes twenty one days to mm. change someone's habit. Okay. So yeah, this website is that abroad. So if you you adopt this lifestyle for twenty two days, mm. then the um. You're likely to to stay on on this lifestyle longer. Okay, well, um, that's great, Mike. Who's sitting here? Um, he's been he's become oh, hello, a, he's become a meat eater. Yeah, he was a vegetarian. He's Opposite about, to you, he's into about day seven. So, uh, what you're <laughs> saying is there's chance for recovery for him. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, um, do you have any questions for Mike? Mike um, <laughs> If you don't mind me asking, Mike, um, might I know your reason why you um, quit being a vegetarian? Mm. Well, my reasons, uh, it's uh, its kind of, um, well, it's a little, I mean, it's, I guess it's not really complicated, but it's, um, so I, I grew up in an area that has a, a very large Vietnamese population, and um I've always loved uh, eating Vietnamese food, and um, the whole time I've been in Vietnam, uh, I had been vegetarian, and then about recently, I've just been like, well, you know, uh, I've always eaten at uh, Chai restaurants, and um, I never I never got to eat, like, proper Vietnamese food, um, yeah. and, and it just kind of struck me one day, and I'm saying, like, look, I, I know I've been vegetarian uh, for... I think it was maybe about five years at that point. And, um, and I just said, you know, I, I just want to at least have, uh, the experience of, uh, of enjoying dishes it, that I love so much in Vietnam and not, uh, you know, in some, uh, city in the U S. Uh, so yeah. from that point on, I just kind of was like, well, I want to go down the list of everything that I want to try, which is, you know, from, you know, Far from Bunryu to Ban Khan Kua, Ban Seo, I mean, just anything I can think of. And I just want to at least, you know, check them yeah. all off the list, essentially. So um, that's that was kind of the, the, the yeah. tipping point, so to say, uh, for, for me to eat uh, meat. But um, I mean, look, I don't eat meat every single day at every single meal. I still 
maybe um i, I mean look i still go yeah. maybe one or two days without even even meat yeah but i i still i cannot call myself vegetarian anymore yeah. even if i do that yeah. so well i guess um i guess what the takeaway from this conversation yeah. really this afternoon is it doesn't matter if you're a hundred percent fifty percent or in and out uh, the important thing is we are trying something to mm. help a bigger issue, whether it's, you know, to encourage uh, a family member, yeah. yeah, encourage another family member's health or just our friends with, you know, helping them complete the 22 day challenge mm. or just inspire somebody like, you know, um, we're not Hollywood celebrities, yeah. we're just normal people. <laughs> But if we can, <laughs> but if we can make a difference, then that's yeah, a big right. thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Hien, thank you very yeah, much. For your, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it, and uh, good thank luck you. with your lifestyle and everything you're doing around uh, veganism and and life in general. Thank you so much, and um, yeah, on the best with your podcast and i yep. uh, look forward to see more of your posts on, awesome. on facebook and, okay. And <laughs> okay all right <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah please continue to comment <laughs> <laughs> and everyone follow greenshug.com so that's g-r-e-e-n-s-c-h-u-g.com and if you want to be part of the uh 22 day challenge that's challenge 22.com thanks Hin. thank you Hin. bye-bye thank you bye-bye Bye. Okay, and finally for this episode, it is Get Excited! Get Excited! All right, let's get excited, shall we? This is our segment where we tell each other what bar, restaurant, cafe, drink, trend, event, or food we should all be getting excited about. Who's going to go first? Mike. Okay, Mike, you're up. Captain Fook's new... Excuse me? (laughs) Fook you. Uh, No, it's uh, Captain Fook's... Fish and chip shop. Okay. Uh, that oh, is, yeah. uh, they just added um, another little dining area. Oh, and, wow. And um, their fish and chips are very much on point. Okay, awesome. nice. What pa- sort of, pa- Pablo the chef. What sort of batter? Do, do they do beer? the batter or do they beer crumb batter? it? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not beer that Beer well. batter? I, think, I believe it's a beer batter, yeah. Wow. Uh, craft beer batter? Craft beer batter. Mm. Oh. It's whatever you want it to be. Tiger, awesome. Tiger, uh, no, but they they do like uh, fish tacos too. Oh right. Um, they had a beef taco as well. Where I is mean, this? That's great. Uh, it's on Fan Viet Chan Street. Oh okay. Bintan. So it's yeah. in Bintanya, yeah. and um, it's next to. Uh, it's, I mean, one stall down from where Birdie is, or before Birdie. Ah, that's right. Okay. okay, cool. All right, great, Mel. Well. I am on theme. I am excited about a vegan restaurant right here next to uh, our place in District 7. No way. District 7? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just all Korean. <laughs> no. no this one's called the Vegan Garden. I'm Bulgogi. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right. Sorry. So going back to the Vegan Garden. So this one is on uh, Ha Hui Tap Street. This is in the uh, Mi Kan um, apartments in district seven. So when I went there, I had the, uh, vegan garden, uh, chickpea hamburger. So that's, well, it's the uh, chickpea and lentils burger. Sorry. And, uh, they have different kinds of burgers. They have, you know, three kinds of, um, potatoes, Mm. like, you know, mix crispy, sweet potatoes. How's the prices? Um, under a hundred. For a burger. Yeah, okay. under 100. And then, of course, they have fresh juices and stuff like that. This vegan garden is also owned by Hua Viet. So it's a Chinese and Vietnamese cuisine restaurant. Mm, okay. So they also have veg- uh, vegan uh, Vietnamese dishes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about a collaboration between the Bureau and the Studio Saigon. So we're going to have an event coming up in March. Yay. Uh, uh, the Studio Saigon has sort of his, Richie has uh, redecorated Okay, rearranged. Uh, rearranged the place and he's opened up the front of the place uh, so that it can be more of a walk-in bar. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a launch event together in March, so uh, look out for that. No Yay. doubt you'll uh, see it all over our social media and website. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening in and thank you, Mike and Mel, for joining me again. The check's in the mail. <laughs> 
<laughs> Might take a few weeks. <laughs> uh, before we go, one final observation from both of you about Saigon. Well, the streets are empty. It's like Tet for one month. And I'd really, really love to go back Have to Have y'all work. noticed the blue skies the last <laughs> few days? Oh, it's been amazing. <laughs> yep. Loving it. Yeah. Yep. So as much as this coronavirus is, is kind of like really terrible, it does give the city a reprise from the pollution and the noise and just making everybody sit back and reflect on things. Yep. yep. Mike. Don't freak out. Just wash your hands, guys. Exactly. Yeah. And I think my don't touch your don't don't touch your eyes and pick okay. your nose in public. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my my observation is pretty much along the same vein. Many of the guys in hospitality around town are finding things tough at the moment. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are staying in to eat. Mm-hmm. So uh, leave the mask at home. Get on the motorbike and support your local bars, pubs, cafes, and restaurants. Now, don't forget to go to our website, thebureauasia.com, for plenty of stories and info about Vietnam and the region. And you can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Where at, Mike? At the Bureau Asia. 